Welcome to today's episode of the Bowtie Guy Podcast. You know what? Today I'm going to check and wreck some of your beliefs, misbeliefs, misconceptions about ADHD. Now, what makes me somewhat of an expert on this topic? Well, no one says I'm an expert, but you know what? I have experience because I have ADHD. Something I've struggled with, what I determine has been a very long time. I can't put an identifiable, um, quantifiable age on it, but I will tell you that being diagnosed later in life with ADHD, it answers a lot of questions that I've had about certain uh, situations, scenarios, learning environments, learning outcomes that I've had over the course of my 31 years on this earth. Let's talk real quick. It is a sensitive issue, this ADHD. Now, if you don't know what ADHD, you must have been living under a rock because ADHD stands for attention, deficit, hyperactivity, disorder. Now, it's all them things in a bag of potato chips. I'll tell you this right now. My, <laughs> my assessment of my ADHD at my psychiatrist's office was off the chain. I mean, I tried to be honest as it could be about reporting the evidence that I've experienced, that I've seen, but also the test. They gave me some ver- something on my head, and uh, as many and like, and it was like an electronic meter measure monitor. I don't even know what it was. But, but I know what it was trying to track. It had an elect, electronic impulse or electronic, um, I guess, registry on the front of it. Now, it, it, it tracked how many times it deviated from a target. Now, I had to do a task, but then the more I deviated, the more, more that seismograph was like, oh boy, this boy has a hard time. But I'll be honest with you, uh, I've always wondered um, about why I couldn't. When some kids could, I couldn't. And I'm one of these cats that I have the resolve of iron. I I hate the word can't. Can't in my life died a a, a long death a long time ago. And I'm like, we love to capitalize upon these buzzwords such as mindfulness. (laughs) Seriously, it's a lucrative uh, business, that word mindfulness. Also, growth mindset. That's a lucrative uh, venture right there. But you need to understand that I've had resolve. I Look, I, I feel like I have a God-given ability to do anything I want to do. Because we're all gifted in something, right? I was tested for gifted on three different occasions and three different grade levels. And I failed all three times. I performed in the classroom exceptionally well. I loved, I, like, and I was somewhat compliant. And when I say compliant, I had this sick and deep respect for my teachers. My mom, to this day, she she just said, well, because he had a good mama. Well, yeah, I had a healthy fear of my mama. My mama did a fantastic job raising her baby boy. But I'll tell you this right now, I just admired teachers. I just thought they're the coolest thing ever. And honestly, I just wanted to, I wanted them to like me. I wanted them to love me. And I wanted to impress them. That seems to be uh, from a bygone era. I don't know. I worked very studiously to earn their respect, to earn their approval. And and I, I learned because I was watching them. Uh, they modeled great behavior. And so I, I guess I'm thankful for having great teachers that modeled exceptional social behavior, especially in a classroom environment. Now let's get back to the old ADHD. I want to tell you right now that when we're talking about research-based strategy, you need to know that a child who has ADHD in a classroom, un, undiagnosed, and unmedicated, and, I, and I'd, I'd venture to say just thrown to the wolves because I, with someone like myself, and I have to throw myself under the bus here, and I, I, I have no problem in being uh, honest with my audience. I have to take medication to this day for my ADHD. Why? Because my brain doesn't operate like yours. My brain doesn't operate like his or her. No, it, it, my brain cannot do what is expected of it with great fidelity because of the way my brain is made. Now, I will go ahead and tell you, I kumbaya and champion and high five and chuck and jive with those that say that ADHD is a strength, not a weakness. I do agree with that. 
I've always thought that, you know, there's something exceptional about me. There's something beautiful about me. There's something beautiful about all of us. I knew I was a different cat though, and I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail a little bit later. But in all intents and purposes, a child who has ADHD in the classroom that is not medicated, and what I'm saying not medicated, I'm not talking yo-yo medicine. And you know, the worst thing you can ever find in a classroom is a child who has their medication messed with where they're not consistent with it. They don't take it as prescribed from the doctor. This wreaks havoc on a child's body. It wreaks havoc with a child's emotions, wreaks havoc with a child's nervous system, wreaks havoc with the socio um, development of that child. There are unfair expectations levied upon children who have the yo-yo Medicaid. And you know what I'm saying? My audience, you know what I'm saying? It's so unfair. And sometimes you just feel helpless because you can't you can't do, you can't advocate for that child because you're not their legal guardian, but you know something's up. You know that they're not taking their medication with great fidelity as prescribed by the doctor, by the uh, practitioner, by the by whatever. You need to understand that when, when it's being messed with, that student is not being given the best opportunity to succeed. And I try to emphasize that in conferences with parents who have uh, highlighted the fact that their child has ADHD and takes medication. Now, the, there is a 90% disposition, and I know that freaks you out, and you're like, whoa, yes. But what I'm saying is there's a 90% disposition in a child who has ADHD, but is not medicated. And what I'm saying is there's no yo-yo medication. No, there's no medication. 90%. We haven't done the research, and it's kind of inconclusive to do the research about the yo-yo medication. You know what I'm saying. Who knows how much of a detriment research-based that the achievement is that it takes a toll on that child when they're not getting the medication with fidelity that they need. Dear Lord, from what I've seen some things in my 10 years, it's not a good experience. It's not a healthy experience. It's not a pleasurable experience to see a child who has not had their medicine for that particular particular day. Not only are they socially ostracized, they feel like a kaleidoscope if a kaleidoscope had feelings. What I'm saying is there's ups, downs, all arounds. I know this from experience, but one thing that is just something you should put in the pipe and smoke it, look, medication does work. It works for me at least. I can't speak for everyone. Some people, some children, some adults, medication may not be the best avenue for them. But I have lived a life without medication and I have lived a life with medication. And I know that my life is dramatically better with medication. I want to tell you that it hurts knowing that I can't be the best person I can be. It's a struggle. And I just think about so many opportunities, so many things in my life that I may have perhaps missed because I was never at my best. Now, I never pursued it growing up. I did, I did uh, acquire glasses. I, I did recognize that I had a vision problem in high school and I started wearing contacts and glasses then and that helped a little bit. But what about the fact that you can't pay attention? What about the fact that I'm rocking in my seat as like a stem, as like a, a, a cloak of uh, peace and, uh, and of, of just quiet that I need in the midst of a loud and obnoxious classroom? That's one thing I did, especially in high school. I, I would just kind of rock. But I, like I said, I was always compliant, but see, the, the hyperactivity, that always came at home. And if you don't believe me, you could ask my mother. I was like a walking, talking pinball machine, baby. 100 miles an hour. But one thing I totally admire, my mom, one million percent accepted me for who I was. She recognized my shortcomings, my limitations. And you know what? She tried to, one thing I really enjoy about how my mother parented me, she always tried to enhance my weaknesses, my areas for growth. She never belittled me, never lectured me, never scolded me. She always just lovingly led me in the right direction by actions, not by words. And it meant the world to me. This is part one 
of our series, of our series of episodes that we're going to have about ADHD. We'll see you in part two. Welcome to part two of our series on ADHD. Now, we left off in the last episode where I was disclosing the love that my mother gave me, capitalizing upon my weaknesses, trying to enhance my areas that needed growth by loving me. And what I mean by loving me, look, you have never in your life met a more disorganized person than this guy right here. What I'm saying, it looks bad. And that's a skill set that I'm still acquiring to this day. Look, I'm so glad that my mother never condemned me for my disorganization, never condemned me for my flightiness, never condemned me for my 100,000 energy, as my seven-year-old says. Look, we're all different. We all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. Once we, once we recognize that, I think this world will be a much, much better place. Don't you agree? Now, let's get back on the topic of ADHD. Like I said in the last episode, a student who is not taking, has not taken uh, medication for their diagnosed ADHD is at a 90% detriment, 90% disadvantage to those, I guess you'd call the control in the classroom. And, and, and there is no average or typical student in a classroom. Look, every child is on the kaleidoscope on the spectrum of learning. But the, the one thing that really jumps out at me is that as a teacher with ADHD, I would like to think that I early in my career, now I was diagnosed with ADHD halfway uh, into my sixth year teaching. And it was um, alarming for me because, I don't know, I guess it was how I was appraised. And, and I guess just, I don't know, I, I, I've been recognizing things my entire life about the disorganization, the floodiness of thought, uh, my difficulty in sleeping patterns, uh, kind of like a yo-yo diet, if, if, if I'm not being too crass there. Just very, not obnoxious, but impulsive. And sometimes, uh, throughout the, the many years before I was diagnosed with ADHD, the one thing that really jumps out at me is the fact that I always wanted to do good. I always wanted to meet the needs and meet the expectations and desires of the people around me. But sometimes I was restrained by something. And I, and I know that has a negative connotation. And sometimes we limit ourselves to those. But I don't know. I just I went through a period of just thinking that it was unfair. Unfair that things just came so much easier for other people. And like I said in the first part of this episode, uh, this series, there are many people that champion the fact that ADHD is actually a strength. And I agree with you because there's no one who has more ideas than, than, than I do about anything. Look, I got something to say about everything. That's why a podcast seems to fit nice and snug and comfortably in the palm of my hand. Because, look, if you ever need someone to say something, just put a mic in front of me because I have an opinion about everything. However, now that I have a diagnosis of ADHD, attention, deficit hyperactivity disorder, I can, I'm learning more about myself. And see, as a teacher, as a student, I'm a lifelong student. Um, I go to the uh, University of Hard Knocks. One thing that I've understood is that I love learning about myself. As I've referenced in an earlier podcast episode about MBTI, the Myers-Briggs personality analysis, Look, I'm an INFJ. There's 16 personalities documented in the Myers-Briggs personality analysis, MBTI. 16 personalities, and I identify as an INFJ, which com composes, if you look at the entire population of the world, hypothetically, I fit within 1% of the 100%. It is the rarest personality type, INFJ, and needless to say, I have some great company, Mahatma Gandhi, even uh, the podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's a hundred percent free. 
Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.